always have that preconceived notion of like what you think might actually transpire in the event or what what's going to you know sort of have, go down in practice a little bit you try not to but you it just it just human nature we all do it and when you get out there and it's not as good as what you anticipated it to be you know you you're just sort of come in thinking like well dang you know you don't know if that's you you don't know if that's maybe the fish um, so it might be great for everybody else then you're not on them so that's why you know especially sort of couple that with tough conditions and big waves and um, that's that's a perfect <laughs> the recipe for being beat down you know each tournament has its own story and you know it's just sort of one of these tournaments that I feel like it might get better throughout the event. Conditions don't look great, but it's like that adversity can can also sort of, and wind changing direction can open up areas on the lake. I'm gonna say like three and a quarter maybe. Keeping my peepers open, looking, and, and, and it's just all about, you know, putting together a plan. You know, wind's going to change direction, finding, you know, fish on each side of the lake, no matter how hard the wind blows. You have some that are protected, some that are not. Um, having some backup smaller ones if you need to catch one or something like that, that maybe not everybody's going to find. Maybe a deeper one. That's really the whole, really, strategy in a sight fishing tournament. Saving some and catching the ones that you feel like, especially being Group A this week, feeling you know like that for the most part it's just really like figuring out uh, understanding maybe like one a few a few fish you're going to start on and then like what areas are getting a lot of pressure and what areas do you feel like maybe you could save that was a uh that was a lot better of a day morning started off pretty slow but um i think i think we found a few fish you know and that's all you really can ask for i don't know um how many other guys found those? You know, we have maybe enough to, to last a couple days, but uh, we'll just sort of see what the conditions are like, you know. And I think it's it's going to be really windy, but overall, I mean, I, I I'm pretty excited to go out there and, and reel a few in. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm tired of shaking them off. We only caught like four bass total uh, during three bass. I think four bass, three largemouth, two smallmouth, so five bass in practice. And tomorrow we get to uh, uncover and open up uh, the presents. Let's first see what we got. Oh, he so really. now he's recording me on his phone, but... Now you need to start recording him, though. Come on, okay. Colin! We, we dropped the ball. He recorded me on his phone, right? So he's trying to get this, like, real report. So as he's recording me on the phone, I'm like this. Way to him. Right? <laughs> And he wants to cuss so bad, but he's recording, so he can't cuss. So he cussing me out in sign language, in, in lips. Bro, you are off the chain. No, I'm he like, did not. Did you move on the lake for that? Right. Like, what are you doing? And then I look over there and I see the sign, and the sign say private property. Right? No. Land. I'm like, yeah, I see, I'm like, I didn't tell him I see the sign. I, 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 I can't hear you, bro. I just took that. Hey. And then once I once I found Pete that he's getting irritated off that, oh. that's all I kept saying. I can't hear you. Did I? He sat there. He sat there a little longer. Oh, yeah. I know what time it is. I ain't got no eight pounder to start on, so I know you ain't going to my hole. <laughs> <laughs> when I hear a decibel come out of his mouth, lines <laughs> in. Left. <laughs> <laughs> he said, My name's Lurch, and happy to have everyone out here. Our anglers are going to be taking off at 7 30 this morning, and it's going to be lines in at 8 a.m., so a half hour to get to where they want to start. This will be three periods and two breaks for our 40 anglers. This is qualifying group. 
one, excuse me, group A, qualifying day number one. Big story yesterday, and as the week has unfolded, has been the weather and the wildfires that are brewing up in the country of Canada. The north wind is forcing a lot of this haze in the skies, but as we kind of look out there today, it looks a little bit clearer than it was yesterday. First of the day, pretty fish. Four pounds, 10 ounces. <laughs> That's a good one right there. Good one to start the morning off, 410. All right, let's go. Good one. Holy moly. All right. There we go. Gosh, you set the hook on him. You're like, oh, it's just a. It's not. You're like, nope, it's not. <laughs> I'm okay with that, too. Golly. He was not, that's about as far in the mouth you're going to get, too. Four pounds, zero ounce. All right, four pounder. There you go. Four pounder. All right, mister. Oh, That's a fun day. Good afternoon. We interrupt your programming with breaking news. Canadian wildfires are causing an air quality alert for the tri-state area for a second day, posing a health concern and danger to millions of people. Hello, I'm Dana Tyler. We are monitoring the smoky haze as it blankets our area. People are being warned to stay indoors and avoid going outside if possible. This day is really, really important. This day is really, really important. If we're going to win the tournament, it's literally going to, we're going to find them today. And that, and that's like my mindset, like what I'm thinking, I'm always processing information, trying to repair and think and think ahead. It's like, you know, you got to find some big ones and you got to find some sneaky ones too. So it's like the thing that a lot of people don't understand is like once you make the cut, a lot of people are just happy to make the cut, but you have a sense of urgency to prepare for the knockout round and every second is valuable. Every minute you, you have to be thinking about that next fish on that next day. Like when you're, like you have to. So every time I get in that position, you you go, you get after it. You're looking for. You might find the new, the area you're gonna win the tournament at. You might find a new fish that you never knew was there. That's a seven pounder. I mean, the state record smallmouth was caught on this body of water literally five days from right now last year. So I mean, you find a fish like that, an eight pounder. You could win the tournament literally on that one fish because that's just so much of a separator. Okay, now 
but that's the end of the period, you know, end of the period. We ended up having a pretty good day. So far, 19 something pounds. Um, found some new fish and still not the big ones. We need five plus pounders. So got to put our head down this, this next period and try to find some five plus pounders. And, and that's going to be the, the name of the game to win this tournament. So wish us luck. We'll see you all in a bit. There he is. Got him. Nice one. Nice one. Interesting. Come on, don't come off, please. Solid. Ooh. In the mouth. In the mouth. Yes, sir. All right, got us this one. Oh man, it's fun. Flat calm this morning, which makes it a little bit more fun. Three pounds, 10 ounces. Those are the ones you can't catch in the knockout. It's sort of the reason why we're catching them right now, <laughs> because we can't have those size fish in our bag if we want to make a top 10, so that's really good to know. Not a big one. I did not take one though. I'll give him that. He was a feisty. One. Feisty. Come here. Dude, he's so tall. Dude, look how tall that fish is. <laughs> God, look like a bluegill in the mouth. Golly. Look like a big bluegill. Oh my God. Four pounds, five ounces. <laughs> that fish is like 17. I gotta imagine. I'm sorry, I'm just shocked at how let's get this board wet. I just am shocked at how fat these fish are. It's insane. So this fish right here is literally a 17 and a half inch fish. And it's just like, gosh. Four five. Wow. Beautiful fish. Let's go right on back. Woo! That's what I'm looking for, the state record. <laughs> I'm like, where are you at, Shamu? Hey, yo, Shamu. Hey, yo, Shamu. Hey, what's that, uh, hey, that's what I'm looking for, Shamu. Legitimately. So. Come here. Mm -hmm. In the mouth, sorry. The mouth. Sorry. You're good. I just. Small amount, they don't play. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Sure. <laughs> That's a good one right there. A 414. Thank you so much, baby. See you later. Everything that I try to do is all about strategy. It's always thinking about the end result and the end goal, and that's to win this tournament. Now, that being said, I had some fish that I had not had opportunity to catch. Um, and so, you know, day one started off phenomenal. Caught 20, 20 some pounds very quickly. Um, was up there really high, you know, really put myself in a position where I was able to practice. Problem is, wind was blowing pretty hard day number one, so I really wasn't able to, to cover as much water efficiently, as efficiently as I would have liked to. That being said, you know, it just came down to the fact of at least checking out some main areas that were, were open at that time, or were, you know, at least you could see with, with no wind. Um, and then going into day two is really more so of like honing in your area, if you will. That's really how it went down. It's like hone in your area, focus on one zone because if you, you know, so I had to eliminate some things. I caught a few fish, 
Um, they weren't the ones I needed and they didn't seem like they were as fat and as healthy as the fish in, in, in other areas. So that was a really big deal was basically in that day number two of the qualifying rounds, I was able to eliminate areas as well as add and sort of lock myself in one area. Let me see what I got in here. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out if that's going to be all right or not. Look. So, so what's really interesting, more so to start the knockout round, is um, the, the unknown. Group A meets Group B, mm -hmm. and although this is a vast fishery, there's only a certain number of spots that contain the fish. How stacked up are things going to be out there on Cayuga Lake for these guys today? Today's going to be intense. It's going to be mentally tough on some. It's going to get chirpy. Chad, I think this has the makings of one of the most intense knockout rounds we have ever seen. Bradley Roy, four pounds, zero ounces. That's how you start it. <laughs> oh, found this fish. Oh my goodness, the mouth. Way inside the mouth. <laughs> Way inside the mouth. Five pounds, seven ounces. Five pounds. Okay. Not a bad one. Five and a half. This is going to be the smallest one of the day. <laughs> Mouth. Definitely in the mouth. Yep. Got that one. Been out there a little while. Four pounds, 13 ounces. For sure. <laughs> Good one. All right, let that one go. Got it. It's a chunky one, that's for sure. All right. Five pounds, four ounces. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right, we got that one. They all got to be fives and a couple sixes today. They all got to be fives and a couple sixes. That one was not easy. Holy moly. Worked really hard for that fish. Finally triggered the bite. Come on, fish. Right there. Yes, sir. Got him. Oh, that's a good one right there. 
All right. Whew. Five pounds, nine ounces. <laughs> there you go. All right. We need one. We need two of them, like just like that, is what we need. So, in tournament bass fishing, you know, I there is a lot of adrenaline, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know. I'm trying, I'm here in score tracker. Adrian's got a big bag. I'm sitting here and I, and I, and I'm like, man, I got to catch a big one. I just caught a 511. I've caught a couple other fish and I see this fish that I had marked from the qualifying rounds. It's pretty deep and I, and I pitch over there to it. And when it bites, I'm like, okay, it's another, you know, probably it's a big fish. I'm like six pounder. Probably I had a marked, you know, it's a big one. So I mean, it's a big one. I set the hook. And it comes up and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it's like the biggest one I've hooked all week, six plus pounder. And it jumps and I'm like, could it, could it be bigger? No, no. And I'm fighting and I'm fighting. So I'm like, oh, please come on, come on, come on. And I finally get that fish in the boat. Yes, sir, baby. And when I put my hands on Woo! it, I'm like, what the heck did I just catch? I get it in the boat. You know, and I unhook the fish, put it on, put it on, on, on the scale, and it says seven five. Seven pounds, five ounces. Seven five. That's a giant. That's an absolute giant. That's an absolute giant. Nice fish. Holy smokes! I'll send it to you. I'm, I'm, when I had that fish in my hands, I was shaking. And that's, that's the moment you live for. Like that's the moment for every deer hunter, that's a 200 inch deer. I mean, it was, it was a special moment. I sat down on the deck and I laid on the deck for like a few minutes and I'm just shaking. And I shook for 25 minutes after that while I was still looking for another fish and doing my thing. Like you don't see seven pounds of smallmouth very often. Holy smokes, what the heck's going on? It's a giant one. Oh my gosh, man. Sometimes uh, the good Lord shines down on you. So that one was a, actually a fish I had marked. It was actually a fish I had marked. I didn't know it was that big, obviously. <laughs> Suckers like that one. Oh God. Seven five, seven five. That's, I don't even know, man. As long as Adrian and I win this tournament, I don't care. Dying on one habit, of course. But I'll be very content if he if he got one, man. It'd be cool to see that. One two, man. Last year DC and I got uh, we went one two. And so uh, the house this year we need to get one two again. Kiyuga's been good. It's been good to us. Um, you know, leading his to work ethic is unmatched. I, I've been with a lot of guys. I have fished for 30 plus years and no one works harder. No one has a better work ethic. He is a phenom and has many, many, many years and a lot of records to break. Today was off the chain, seven pound, five ounce smallie. Wow, all I can say is wow. Listen, I, didn't, I didn't know it was that big. I didn't know it was that big. I swear I didn't. I had it marked and I was like, okay, that's a good one, you know? And I just saw it like you had a seven and a half pounder mark, and you did not know it was, it was no. a big one. I, I mean, I knew it was big, but the, the reason why I didn't know is when I was trolling by, I saw it in the in, in the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh, it's a big one. I marked it. I went and flogged the bed. I didn't see him. Like he didn't swim through. And I'm like, okay, that's a big one, but he's goofy. Yeah. And then he wasn't goofy. Today was today. Locked. It was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, one of the giant ones I found. Yesterday was so locked, was gone today. Gone. Like six and a half, seven pounder. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That's crazy. But it's gonna take a lot of weight. I mean, it, them boys absolutely trashed them. I mean, it took almost 26 pounds to make the top 10. Yep. So I mean, I think uh, I, I said it today. I really thought somebody was gonna catch 30. I think somebody's gonna catch 30. They won't. Somebody's gonna catch 30. They won't. We have a new day. It's gonna be calm. 
It's, you, not, it's not sunny though. Yeah, but. Dude, the problem is there wasn't that many You almost had 30 today. The problem was there wasn't that many counter spots. I'm going to catch 30. I mean, you'll catch 30, I'll catch 29. So what I'm saying is somebody's catching 30. You're going to catch 30? 30. I'm Dang. Gonna catch 30. Dang. I'm going to catch 30. I would catch like 28. Oh, well, then I'll win. You will. All right, let's just sign it over now. I got first, you got <laughs> second. Congratulations. I mean, I'm going to let you, you know, I'm going to. All right, might. that's a wrap. I love we it. We appreciate Andy. you guys following. Make sure you hop over. All the boys, man, we've been uh, having fun at the house. And uh, tomorrow is a very big day. Your boy's fishing for 100 grand. Hopefully, one of us right here oh, can win it. Oh, my goodness. Ideally, we go 1 2. And, uh, man, it's going to be fun. It should appreciate be good y'all. It's all fair in love and war. <laughs> Call me a sorry. Twenty four and a half. Hey, I told y'all DC to be mad, low key. Oh, I've been mad all week. I ain't caught. Shit. Yeah, I literally could have caught that like the first hour, but there was so many guys. Dude, I was just looking at my graph. I cannot fish for a five pounder tomorrow. That's yeah. Crazy. Like I have some five nines that I that I already have marked. Dude, I, I can't have, even fish for a five yet. nine. Dude, I have. I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna catch gonna three sixes, a five thirteen, and I gotta go find a seven pound. You got. You had to win. Yeah. You can't catch five. It's it's a lot more crowded. Yeah. It was like Florida. <laughs> you got 17 boats yeah, between man. Cassidy and yeah. yeah. You literally just rotate back. <laughs> Ooh, these bunkers here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's Who? Who will? Yeah, I'll be free about right. We need you. We need 26. Just to keep it like par, like they like play it like long, slow play, Adrian, slow play. What? Hey, slow play. Slow play? Yeah, I got a, well, I mean, slow play. Like, it's like neck and neck, it's just, yeah. you know, go all the way down the, the wire. And then just like, don't catch me at, at the last period. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> there's no seven pounders, okay? There's no seven pounders. <laughs> all right. What about the... Uh, hey, we'll, make, we'll make it real tight. Huh? We'll make it real tight. Yeah. Make, make it close. Even if you got him, just like play it. And, and, and then the last hour, it's freaking. Just dang. <laughs> freaking is real, man. <laughs> All right, let's rock. We've got a little bit of westerly in the winds today, and that has actually shifted that big smoke plume. When I get up in the morning, I, I'm pretty chill. Like I have my game plan. I know what I'm gonna try to accomplish. And, and the thing is, is like a good fisherman, you have to adapt on the water. There is no like, oh, oh wow. you know, of course I'd be lying if I'm like, I'm hoping that I can start on a fish and I hope I can get there first. You know, like there's, that's, there's, my, there's a game plan in my mind of how I would like the day to go. It doesn't always work that way. And you have to change and adapt to the conditions and who else is around you. So that's that's really the thing. I'm not, I don't ever really get riled up or necessarily the jitters. And now tournament win, championship day, I still have jitters. Like, cause there's still always that pressure. It's like everything has got to this moment.
Okay. Not the one we need, but we got one. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I could even see that. As big as I thought it was, but he's a good one. Solid fish. He's five pounds. He's eating you right at it. Four pounds. Twelve ounces. There's four twelve. Catch a couple of seven. All right. All right, Adrian has he's uh, he's his, his put a put a whooping on us so far today, and look. It's the thing. The third period, the conditions are absolutely perfect. Flat, dead flat, calm, big small mouth, rolling up. Like, it can happen. Like, you just catch a couple five and a half pounders, then you find one great big one like we found yesterday. You make that giant jump and catch 28 pounds or 29 pounds, and bam, you're there. So, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but uh, we're going to put ourselves in a position to try to make that happen right now in this third period. It's Mario freaking car. Let's go. Boom. I still freaking took a banana. I can spun out on the banana. <laughs> I need that freaking dang superstar freaking do 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 do. This bass, man. It's like a, it's a it's a dang battle. The sometimes you get personal with a fish, and this one it's getting pretty personal with. So. Oh, it's okay. We tried to make it to it. We did. Dang, now we tried. It's close. What did we end like, up? That would be, that would have been fourth? Still fourth, yeah. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Oh, oh my it's God. dramatic. It's still dramatic. That would been crazy. I didn't know how much. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Oh, I'm not proud of you, bro. What did you call it? You got, you got, yeah, you guys are the reason why it made it so freaking emotional because I'm watching you guys win all the time. Team Hoyt. <laughs> Team Hoyt. You, now you are, you're officially part Finally. Of hey. Oh, I get to do one of the power pole oh, things. Oh, hey, That's so awesome. Dang. <laughs> partying. I'll pay for dinner. No. Hey, this hey, is like a huge hey. ordeal. Him saying to pay for dinner literally has never happened. Hey, you got it all filled. I'm paying for dinner. Okay, okay. That's, but it's just it's drinks, you got to pay for your drinks. <laughs> He's capping there, too. Dang, oh, A squared. Getting it done. Big daddy. That's pretty awesome, dude. That's so freaking cool. I ain't gonna lie. I'm all oh, so freaking pumped. I, we, I ain't gonna lie, we got lucky. With that seven pounder. Otherwise, we'd be like eighth. <laughs> I, I, mean, I knew Adrian was the most dialed in all week. Hands down. I knew it. I could just tell that gut. I had that gut feeling he was just super hidden confidence. Just like, you know, real low key confidence. Ah, oh, man, I think I might catch some. And I'm like, don't be asking me, big dog. Don't be asking me. So I definitely could have done a couple things differently. Um, obviously, talking to Adrian now that the tournament's over and hearing how he caught him, you need to take some time to sort of, you know, put some of that information in your memory bank. Okay, maybe I, this is where he separated himself, and that's what you have to do in a big tournament like this. Man, you know, it's um, it's really what's crazy about this is uh, Adrian won a, a Toyota Series event up on Lake Champlain. This was 2011. Okay. Um, I was a co-angler in that event. This is how long ago it was before I fished a professional tournament. And I just won the All-American and I wanted to learn, you know, get the back of the boat, get a little bit more experience. So I didn't, you know, bring a boat up and fish out of the back of the boat. Um, Adrian won that event. You know, we were both the same age. He was running way down to Ticonderoga. Won that event at, you know, we were both, I think, right at 20 years old. And um, it's crazy coming from that event and, and, and he's had you know about 10 or 11, 12 years since he's won an event. And, and so like, this is his first major win. 
Um, I'd be lying if I did if I, if I told you I I uh, I would have expected it to come sooner because he's a hard worker. I, I think, um, but it was it was he's a hard worker. He puts a lot of time and effort into this craft. But to see him hoist that trophy today, um, it gave me a lot of. I obviously a lot of happiness, super happy for him and his family. I know how much it meant for them, and his, fan, his fans, his friends, um, everybody. And, and that's like, that's so cool to see. But in addition to that, I was just like, I like to see good things come to good people. And um, especially somebody who's working hard. And each, each, every, each and every person in this house works their butt off. So that's something that like for me, like watching Adrian hoist that trophy this afternoon, it was a special, it was almost just as special for me as it was for him. We try to take people on a ride and show them what transpires, but we're really only scratching the surface. Like it's, it's way deeper than, than, and we, and we try to have fun with it. You know, of course, like you guys, a lot of people get to see us having fun in the house, BSing around, joking around, but there's just so much more to each tournament that everybody at home does not get to see you know how much time you put prepping for that event how much time um you know what kind of adversity is happening that week that's not shot on camera you know that you just don't want to air that out there what's happening um you know losing a couple big fish and, and and not making the cut or just being put yourself behind the eight ball and having to make an adjustment there's a lot to it all and um but that's also why i love it so much is because it's never the same it's never the same story every single week it's always changing and when i head up to st Clair next week it's going to be a completely different story there too